Oh, so that channel <coughs> of praise really kind of lifts us up. Yeah, mm -hmm. lifts us up into our practice, our exploration of consciousness today. And uh, just invite you first to just take a look around the Kazoom room and connect yourself with all of the other mm. juicy faces here tonight mm. and, uh -huh. and uh, anybody who can who has the courage to show their face. Hey. You can put your face in there. <laughs> and, um, and see what, you know, what energy you can bring to that kind of uh, projection of what's inside you into the, into the Kazoom screen. So yeah, we've been doing this Kazooming since March 2020. And, oh, well. um, and you know, it's like, uh, it's very, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful mm. opportunity for exploration. And each week, you know, I take that practice from Love at the Center, from the Song of Songs, and let it show me a pathway of exploration. And this week's pathway is called The Secret of the pomegranate, secret of the pomegranate. The pomegranate is a, um, you know, is an image that the Song of Songs gives a number of times through that, and um, mystics through the ages, and especially one mystic whose name is Cordovero, uh, who lived in the 16th century in Sfat. He he wrote a treatise called called. Uh, um, Pardes Rimonim, which is the orchard, orchard of the of the pomegranates, um, because he knew that they held a kind of a secret, a kind of a <clears throat> complexity. And um, when I, um, you know, for much of my life, I didn't have much patience for <laughs> pomegranates. It just seemed like too too much effort too for much. so little payoff. <laughs> <laughs> These little seeds, there's one. <laughs> But I'm learning a little. I'm having a little more maturity, I guess. If I, but if you have to say that you're more mature, you're really not that mature, I guess. But at least you know the concept. Yes, yes. yes. So, uh, but the but the pomegranate <coughs> is an image of of kind of husks and uh, kind of hidden treasures, and in the Song of Songs, it is likened to the face of the beloved that is somewhat hidden and the face the face of god that is sometimes hidden that we need to be able to uncover to reveal within us so um so when i was uh, really exploring what the secrets of the pomegranate are it really brought me to a place of something that i uh, that i called layered spirituality meaning that I come from a a family a family that has kind of a a, a legacy of, of bipolar disease. My father, his father before him, his mother, probably many generations back, sort of dealt with that. And I think it's maybe a Jewish disease, <laughs> partly. <Good. laughs> Not just Jewish, but it's it's you know it's, it's definitely common among Jewish families. To, to find that, and and so when I found myself in the, in the bipolar kind of legacy, moving from great highs to great lows, and getting kind of exhausted with that journey, until I discovered something that I called layered spirituality, and I realized that I could experience both the both the high and the low at the exact same moment. I could experience the depth of suffering in the world and at the very same time you know place it inside the context of this larger joy of my being and i didn't have to shut down any any part of myself um and so i've been you know really trying to develop this this kind of sense of layered spirituality that allows me to 
um, experienced, you know, divergent things at once, and to and to have a kind of an integration um, where they don't become one, but they live side by side within me in uh, in conversation. Um, and uh, for those who have took the Kolzimra training, I would talk about um, stereoscopic consciousness mm -hmm. as a very important um, capacity, the, which was stereo, stereoscopic consciousness is the ability to be deeply connected inside you, in your depths, and at the same time be kind of sensitive and receiving of what's out there. And to experience them both at the same time, and when we when you're in leadership, mm -hmm. and I also you know as, was is I'm very taken with the idea, the Hasidic ideal of tveikut, and tveikut is um, the ideal of being deeply connected to the presence of God, at the very same time out in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, that you don't have to lose your devekut, your connection, in order to be in the world. And if you lose it, then you, get, you, you find it again. And the purpose of our practice is to establish that sense of devekut so that it will be there when we are dealing with this outer world that, is, that can sometimes feel destabilizing. Can sometimes trigger us mightily. Yes, and when you trigger, that's when you lose your yeah, you lose that, right? right? And then today I was thinking about depth perception, about how um, we need two eyes to be able to see the depth of things, because we we sort of take two different perspectives at once, and that's what gives us the possibility of knowing the depths. And uh, that to me was very is very inspiring and uh, for me to be able to hold different perspectives at once it's actually happening so these are these are some of the secrets of the pomegranate that i want to explore tonight so let us sort of open up <coughs> this um, sacred phrase um, that says at the curve of your cheek like a pomegranate hidden behind the thicket of your hair. And, um, and with this practice, plant inside yourself the suspicion that you're not seeing the whole thing, you know, that when, that there are secrets to be known. And, um, and so when I, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's very kind of, uh, compelling to like go into one side or another but to be able to hold both sides of the paradox and know that I have a blind spot and keep on exploring other perspectives that's the secret of the pomegranates <laughs> Mi ba'ad 
secrets beneath the surface. There are hidden treasures of sweetness that we have to search for. Um, we live in a world that can seem so cruel and, uh, and sometimes, you know, can feel sunk by that world. Uh, and so we are given the possibility of acquiring, of cultivating a wise heart, which is a heart that can hold these multi multitudes. And, um, and you know, we're, we're given that heart, you know, and in, in ancient Israel, the heart, heart and mind was the same thing. You know, that's where the mind is in the heart. And our job um, is to create this connection between mind and heart, to have our hearts expand to uh, encompass mind. And, 
and this heart that is, uh, is, is, is given to us is, or that we cultivate or we expand, it really takes some practice and uh, it really takes some attention. Um, and the attention that I l l try to bring is a an attention to, to the mind states that I move through, which uh, really sometimes represent a kind of a fracture of my consciousness. And I need to come back into wholeness. And that's how I see this, you know, this, this process of acquiring this, um, this wise and understanding heart, um, is to be able to expand the heart. Um, I wanted to bring you some, uh, just a, a teaching from, uh, from a book called Mind Sight by Daniel Siegel, who is a, um, I guess a neuroscientist, psychiatrist, psychiatrist mm -hmm. psychologist, uh, who studies the brain, and he talks about these uh, eight domains of integration, which I find really helpful. We, we actually had this handout hanging up years ago. Yeah. in our house for a while, so every time I walk by it, I can sort of check it out. Mm -hmm. And the eight domains of integration um, are is really just laying out what is the work. and. Uh, and so, so the first domain of integration is consciousness itself. And the work of consciousness is, uh, he says, stabilizing attention to harness awareness to create choice and change. Stabilizing attention to harness awareness to create choice and change. Mm. Because the, the mind that is not trained is just you know, just all over the place. It just takes you know takes you on all kinds of trips. So, being able to stabilize that attention is you know really <clears throat> part of acquiring that wise heart. Um, the second domain is horizontal, which is about linking left brain and right brain functions, uh, feeling and thinking. You know, per, you know, perceiving and knowing. It's like well, these different parts of ourselves uh, really kind of like being the corpus callosum, yes. you know, like connecting part up of this part connects. of ourselves. Um, and then the, there's the, so there's the horizontal, and then there's the vertical, which is uh, linking brainstem, limbic, and cortex functions, uh, which means tapping into deep in intuition and wisdom. That's like the vertical axis. Um, the, the fourth area of integration has to do with memory, which, and the work of memory, of acquiring this wise heart, is bringing implicit unconscious memories into awareness so that we can live in the present. So when those, uh, you know, when those memories are just sort of like lurking there and not conscious, they own, they own, they own us. You know, mm -hmm. they pull us out of the present moment uh, into into the past. Or in, um, so that's the work of, of, of in in the, in the domain of of memory, um, the work of narrative, which means creating stories that allow for flexibility, coherence, and possibility. It's like we can reframe everything and make a new story. You know, it's like, oh, is that the story you want to live with? No, let's make a new story here, right. you know, and it's, you know, it's such an important part of the work. Um, the, the next um, domain of integration, he calls it the, the integration of state, which is uh, the healthy dimensions of a layered life instead of parts that are rejected or suppressed. It really is about becoming whole. Uh, uh, the, the, the seventh domain is called interpersonal, which is being able to feel the internal world of others while retaining our own sense of identity and freedom. It's almost like the stereoscopic consciousness mm, yeah. that I talk about. Um, it's like, can I 
know your internal state and at the same time hold on to myself. Uh, and then the last domain he calls temporal, which he, des he describes as living at ease in the face of uncertainty and mortality. Living at ease in the face of uncertainty and mortality. Uh, and I just wanted to, br to bring those to you as a way of framing what is the wise heart. You know, that, you know, that we're moving towards, that we're opening to. The wise and understanding heart is one that has that kind of uh, wholeness. Does that, isn't that, isn't that inspiring? Yes, I'm inspired. I'm inspired mm -hmm. by that. I, you know, and I think so much of my work is sort of articulating what the curriculum is. It's not mm -hmm. like I always know how to do it. Mm -hmm. But knowing what the curriculum it's very is, important. it's very important. Yes. Because then I know when I'm not doing it. Right. <laughs> so, so we say, behold, here, <coughs> here. When we say hine, it's like we're coming into the present moment and we are kind of um, experiencing that download, that kind of uh, process of integration, of coming into wholeness. Hine
נתתי לך להתחתם ונבוא. הנה נתתי לך להתחתם Silence, we open to this pathway to wholeness. Being able to do this work um, with uh, guidance, with companions on the path, um, with all kinds of sources of inspiration. And the wise heart, uh, with that wise heart, we, we notice when we're triggered. And we kind of take that pathway back into wholeness. Chuba. Chuba. <laughs> and Return. sometimes the way, the, the, what I use <clears throat> in order to take that pathway are, are, are two things. And I learned this from a book called... Uh, unwinding anxiety and I that I uh, the two things that I learned as kind of the pathway back into wholeness uh, are compassion and curiosity and you know it's sort of like if I can sort of keep those you know th those are those are pathways back into wholeness into connecting up with the, the neocortex and with the, the whole brain um, that um, if I can just even have a tiny bit of compassion um, or a tiny bit of curiosity that will lead me back uh, from that place of triggered separateness back into, into wholeness. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it helps when we have uh, each other to remind us, you know, to, of, those pa of those pathways. So, um, th the practice I'd like to do with you is called Lament. And um, I created this practice, oh, Julie, you'll remember this. Hmm. Um, during last year, I led a, a retreat um, at the Episcopal House of Prayer, uh, and it was during Tisha B'Av, the uh, the time of the ninth. Oh, and Dorit, you were there too. Oh, and wait a minute. Oh, and Jennifer, you were there yeah, too. Good. Great, <laughs> You're great. all in this in squares <laughs> at near, near each other. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what happened? What you know? I I, I led this retreat, and it was Tisha B'Av, and we needed to all find our lament, and uh, we kind of each went off by ourselves, and I began 
to sing, uh, and my what I started to sing was how my heart has been broken by the cruelty of this world. How my heart has been broken by the cruelty of this world. And um, singing that, and with the first words from the book of Echa, uh, that it is Lamentations, that is read on Tish B'Av, which are the words Echa Yashva Vadad. And those words, um, I think, you know, refer to the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence, that is, uh, you know, oh, how she sits alone. And really just sort of looking at the world and the pain in the world, the cruelty of the world. And um, so as I, you know, as I sat and uh, enchanted those words, some, some, something else started, uh, just kind of crept in there. So I was saying, how oh, my heart has been broken by the cruelty of this world. And then I sang, how oh, my heart has been broken by the beauty of this world. And uh, the beauty somehow just mm. crept in there and said, oh yeah, that beauty, sometimes it's the beauty that breaks my heart. And it's a good heartbreak mm, mm, that my, be mm, my heart mm, is broken open by the beauty of this world. And, and you know, so I don't know, maybe it was my spirit guides whispering to mm, me mm, uh, or something, but somehow to, the chant balance it out. changed that yeah. way and became like a little bit more expansive that I wasn't just lost in that lament of, of cruelty. That, that that's there and I didn't want to deny it but I also didn't want to deny mm. the beauty that holds us so it just became a kind of a, a very powerful practice of the complexity it's kind of a pomegranate <laughs> practice you know of that complexity and that of those uh, hidden treasures of sweetness even in the midst of this world that feels so cruel so, um, so we're gonna, gonna chant this, and um, it's when uh, when I was at the retreat, and uh, David Blumenstein was there, and he said to me, you know, Shefa, this is a round, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so <coughs> we'll try doing it as a round as well. Cause Got my fingers crossed. <laughs> it used to be I would say some things around. It was around, and Rachmel oh would my say, God. "Oh no, not another." I really, round. really got to learn the part now. <laughs> <laughs> but now he but, takes. He sees it's yeah, much better. It is fun once. Yeah, it is fun. <laughs> this thing about around is that you hear you, you, when you're singing one part, you hear the other part, you know? mm -hmm. and so it's like almost like having two voices. So, so, um, so as we as we chant this. Um, just allow the lament to kind of open up into its complexity, into its sweetness. How oh, my heart has been broken by the cruelty of this world. How oh, my heart has been broken by the beauty of Oh, my. 
my heart has been broken by the cruelty of this world. How my heart has been broken by the beauty of this world. Eka Yashva Understanding heart, the wide open heart that can receive all of it, the cruelty and the beauty, all of it.
So as I open to all of it, uh, to kind of make a vow not to shut down, but to be able to receive it all, um, you know, and often when I, um, what I try to remind myself of is that I came here to experience everything it means to be human. The, from the most terrible to the most wonderful. That, you know, there's a place in me that is the soul that is, say, say yeah, that's why I came here, to experience the whole range of what it means to be human. And uh, in order to do that, I have to sort of build a certain kind of a capacity in me to hold it all. And, uh, and um, in order to do that, when I feel like I need... I, Oops. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I feel like what I need to do is kind of reach down inside me and, and open up this kind of a place of resource. And, um, and so, uh, and maybe awaken that, uh, that place of connection inside me that is going to sustain me on this, uh, on this, this path that I have chosen, the path to wholeness that I am, that I am walking. And so, this um, was is a practice that um, that uh, uh, Malila Helner uh, alerted me to this phrase that it uh, appears in the Yom Kippur morning piyut, uh, uh, a, a kind of an ancient poem, and uh, and it refers to the Song of Songs, uh, but and but but it says you know awaken as a bright light the rose of the depths. And uh, the rose is such a kind of like Im important symbol also in, in uh, Sufism. And you know, it's, it's considered, the fragrance of the rose is considered the highest vibration. Mm, yeah. And uh, the the, highest frequency. And, uh, um, and a couple days ago, I went for a hike, uh, n n you know, in my, in my mountains here. And the wild roses were all in bloom. And so the air was filled with this fragrance of wild roses. And it was so incredibly intox intoxicating and awakening. So awakening um, that, that there in our depths is that rose, that high vibration that we are lifting up with our attention, with our intention with our awakening so I love I love singing this practice and uh, and sometimes if you would like to just like uh, begin by just closing your eyes and uh, finding the image of the rose in the depth of your own heart and um, and when I first image that rose I want to image it kind of that it's kind of closed up and uh, the chant will allow us to open up that rose and so that it can bring us the, uh, its, its fragrant, fragrance, its beauty, its power to sustain us uh, as we explore these secrets, as we open to uh, that complexity. <clears throat> Oh, 
comes in return to that image of the bud inside your heart. Breathe into it. And with the next breath, allow that rose to open inside you. Fill you with the fragrance of God. I want to invite you to open your eyes and take a look around the Kazoom room to see all of these roses here uh, blossoming, mm. all of these complex pomegranate faces <laughs> uh, with the hidden sweetness. And you just want to just give a Send a little blessing to everybody. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah. So I just want to uh, 